بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أناديه ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصيه ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما نؤمن له بالربوبية ونقر له بالعبودية من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأوصياء والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين والأخيار من صحابته المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره قال ربنا العزيز في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف ضرب الله مثلا كلمة طيبة كشجرة طيبة أصلها ثابت وفرعها في السماء تؤتي أكلها كل حين بإذن ربها ويضرب الله الأمثال للناس لعلهم يتذكرون صدق الله العلي العظيم Today is the 25th of the month of Muharram, the anniversary of the martyrdom of the fourth Imam of the school of Ahlul Bayt, Al Imam Ali ibn Al Hussein ibn Abi Talib Al Sajjad Zain Al Abidin. This Imam was born in the city of Al Madinah Al Munawwara. His father is Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and his mother is from Iran, the ancient Persia. And when the Muslims, during the time of the second caliph, they conquered Persia, they arrested the royal family, the family of the king or the emperor of Iran at that time. And they took them as <coughs> prisoners of war. And they brought them all the way from Iran to Medina. And they stood before the second caliph. Among the royal family were the two daughters of the king of Persia at that time, Yazdugir, the Kisra of Iran. And the caliph ordered them to be sold in the market as slaves or prisoners of war. Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib والسلام, was there. He turned to the second caliph and he said to him, The tradition of the Prophet, وسلم, the Sunnah of the Prophet, Annabanat al Muluki la tuba. The daughters of the kings, even if you arrest them and take them as prisoners of war, they cannot be sold in the market. This is the sunnah of the Prophet. They have to be respected and honored. So Umar ibn al Khattab asked, If we don't sell them, what should we do with them? Amir al Mu'mineen said to him, You have to free them. And when they were freed with the recommendation of Amir al-Mu'mineen, 
Amir al-Mu'mineen proposed to one of them her, by the name of Shahrbanu for his son, al-Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. So Lady Shahrbanu, she married al-Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam and the second, her sister, was married to the son of the first caliph, Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr. Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, <clears throat> his father is Abu Bakr, the first caliph. When his father died, his father Abu Bakr married his mother Asma bint Umais al khathamiya during Fath Mecca, the year Mecca was conquered, the eighth year of the Hijrah. And then after that she got pregnant and she delivered Muhammad, the son of Abu Bakr, and he was only two years old when his father died. When Abu Bakr died, his son Muhammad was only two years old. So Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam married Asma after the death of her husband. Abu Bakr, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam married her. So Muhammad went into the custody of Amir al-Mu'mineen. So biologically Muhammad is the son of Abu Bakr. But spiritually and morally, he's the student and the son of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wassalam. And he raised him very well alongside with Imam Hassan and Hussein. And he was so loyal to Amir al-Mu'mineen to the extent that during the battle of Jamal, where Lady Aisha, she mobilized 20,000 people from Medina all the way to all the way to Basra to fight against Amir al-Mu'mineen. Muhammad, her brother, he chose to be with Amir al-Mu'mineen on his side. And after the defeat of the people of the camel, the, the battle of Jamal, Amir al-Mu'mineen took, ordered Muhammad to take his sister, Lady Aisha, all the way from Basra back to the city of Medina. So Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr married the second sister of the king of Persia. And from the first marriage of Imam Hussein alayhi salam and Lady Sharbanu, Imam Ali ibn al Hussein, Zain al Abideen, wa Sayyid al Sajideen, was born. Wa inna walidan bayna kisra wa hashimin. Wa inna walidan bayna kisra. The Sha'ar says this newborn baby, one of his great grandfathers is Hashim, the father, the grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the other grandfather is Kisra. And Imam Zain al Abidin was 23 years old when he witnessed the tragedy of Karbala the murdering of his father, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And he is the only male survival in the camp of Imam Hussein, the only adult male who survived the tragedy. And this is through the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the protection of Allah. So the Imamah, the leadership of Islam, the Khilafah, the succession to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would continue after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein. So he survived. They attempted to kill him, but through the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they had attempted to kill him in Karbala one time and in Damascus the second time. Yazid himself attempted to kill Imam Zain al Abidin, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defends his servants. And the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be executed because the only survival and the only inheritors of Ahlul Bayt at that time was Imam Ali ibn al Hussein, Zain al Abidin. But when he came back to Medina, Imam Zain al Abidin did not stop helping the Muslim Ummah, the Muslim community, including giving advice to the tyrants of that time. Those who were contemporary to him, the caliphs who were contemporary to his time, the first one was Yazid ibn Muawiyah. 
After Yazid came his son, Muawiyah, Ibn Yazid, Ibn Muawiyah. Then after that, the household of Marwan came to power with the first caliph, Abdul Malik Ibn Marwan, who had so much hate to Ahlul Bayt during their time. And after him came Al Walid Ibn Abdul Malik Ibn Marwan, became the caliph. And during the time of Al Walid Ibn Abdul Mut uh, Al Abdul Malik, there was a big economic crisis within the Islamic Ummah. Muslims used to send their money to be in a grave and printed, which was silver coins and gold coins, the dinar and the dirham. Dinar was the gold coin and the dirham was the silver coin. And each 10 dirhams, they would make one dinar. So they would send them to Syria, to the Roman Empire, the seat of the Roman Empire, to be engraved there. There was some misunderstanding and conflict between the Caliph, Al Walid ibn Abdul Malik, the Umayyad Caliph in Damascus, and the Roman king. So the Roman king said to him, We are not going to print any money for you, no more coins putting a pressure on them, economic pressure, like some countries nowadays when they put economic pressure on other countries to deprive them. <coughs> Here, Al-Walid ibn Abdul, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan was very distraught. He was very afraid. The economic system was going to collapse. Muslims are going to be left with no, no coins, no money. So he knocked at the door of Imam Zainul Abidin. Imagine this man who later killed the Imam himself. Imam Zainul Abidin was killed by the order of Al Walid when he sent the poison from Damascus to Sham, uh, from Damascus in Sham to Medina, and he asked the governor of Medina at that time to put this poison in the food of Imam Zainul Abidin in the year 95 Hijri, and ultimately. Imam Zain al Abidin salam, died as a result of that poison. But here, when he's in need, when he is in the state of emergency, he comes and he knocks at the door of the Imam. And he addresses him by saying, Yabna Rasulullah. Now he recognizes that this man is the grandson or the son of the Prophet. And he said to him, we are in a crisis and now Adrik Ummatajaddak. This is the nation of your grandfather. So you have to help us. Imam alayhi salam, he drew a plan and he taught the people there how to engrave and how to print and produce these silver and golden coins without the need without the need of going to the Roman Empire. And for the very first time, the Muslims, when it came to printing their monetary system and their coins, they became independent for the very first time with the guidance and the help and the supervision of Al-Imam Ali ibn al-Hussein, Zainul Abidin alayhi salatu wassalam. The suffering of the Imam and his household was a lot. When they took the hostages of Karbala, the family of the Prophet, after the assassination of Imam Hussein, they took all women and children to Kufa first, and then from Kufa they were sent to Damascus to stand before the Caliph of the time, Yazid ibn Muawiyah. There, Al Imam Zainul Abidin met Al Minhal ibn Amr. Al Minhal says to him, "Kayfa asbahta ya ibn Rasulillah? How do you feel?" Yabna Rasulullah. The Imam answers him with this saying. He says, Ya Minhal, Amsat al Arabu taftakhiru ala al Ajam bi anna Muhammadan minha. The Arabs, the Arab community, they always take a pride that Muhammad is an Arab. He's not a non Arab. He's not an Ajam. He's one of us. He's an Arab. Wa Amsat Quraysh. تَفْتَخِرُ عَلَى سَائِرِ الْعَرَبِ بِأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا مِنْهَا And then Quraysh, the main tribe in Mecca, also they take a pride 
that Muhammad is not from another tribe. He's from our own tribe. وَأَصْبَحْنَا And then imagine, people are taking pride that the Prophet is from them, but at the end of the day, وَأَصْبَحْنَا نَحْنُ آلُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ مُشَرَّدِينَ مَقْتُولِينَ We, the family of the Prophet, his sons, his daughters, حَرَمُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ Look at what is happening to us. People take a pride that Muhammad is from them, but when it comes to the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we are being killed and tortured, and we are being paraded. The daughters of the Prophet, the granddaughters of the Prophet, they being paraded in the streets from Karbala to Kufa, from Kufa to Damascus and back to, to Medina. This is the fate of Alu Rasulullah. Imam Zain al-Abidin witnessed all these tragedies, but he was deep in his faith, in his faith and connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was very, very strong. He was very strong. And he produced to the ummah at that time, despite these tragedies, but Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salatu wa salam, he never stopped helping and guiding Ahlul Bayt were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and were chosen by Allah to guide despite all the bad and terrible, terrible circumstances that they went through. None of them survived, none of them had a natural death. Ma minna illa maqtulun aw masmoom. Imam al Sadiq says, None of us will die a natural death, either by sword or by poison. But Imam Zain al Abidin, he continued his message of guidance. He would purchase the slaves at that time. He would bring them to his house and he will educate them and teach them for one year. They will go through an intensive course of receiving Islamic knowledge from the master of the Islamic knowledge, from Ahlul Bayt, where the Holy Quran descended in their homes, among them. He would teach them for one year and he would release them after that. He would release them, but he will ask them to go and teach the people and disseminate the knowledge that they learned from him. He would free them fi sabilillah. Last night I mentioned Imam Zain al-Abideen, his, his lifestyle, his hobby, his job, his passion, was to serve others, serve those who are poor. Every single day, he would open his house after Salat al-Dhuhr for people to come and eat, for the needy, for the orphans, for those who could not have decent living. In the night, he would not go to bed. When night falls, he would carry the bag on his own shoulder. Despite having servants in his house who were ready to serve him, he would say, I will do this job. It is my responsibility to put the food in the bag on his shoulder and he would carry it and he knocks at the door while he's covering his face. Oftentimes people receive this ma'una, this help, this aid from him without even recognizing him. Without recognizing that this is the Imam, Hujjatullah, this is the grandson of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he always, always emphasized that you have to give from the best of what you have, not the worst. Give from the best. And when you give, give in secret. Don't publish and don't announce. It is mustahab that when a person gives sadaqah, a charity, with the right hand, would not allow the left one to realize that. And he would say, when you give in secrecy, in a privacy, you don't allow, you are extinguishing the wrath of God. Extinguishing by this act, noble act of giving, helping to others without letting your wife, your son, your neighbor, your friend know about it. You are extinguishing the wrath and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is 
the work of Imam Zain al Abidin. And then there is another work for him, Risalatul Hukuk, the treaties of human rights. Human rights in the world, in America, in the West, was introduced about 64 years ago. The Charter of the Human Rights. But look at what Imam Zain al Abidin produced over 300 years ago, over 1300 years ago. Over 1300 years ago, Imam Zain al Abidin produced this work where I urge the intellectual ones to read it, to study it. Risalatul Hukuq lil Imam Ali ibn al Hussein, where he states that there are 50 rights upon every individual. Beginning with the right of nafs, your soul has a right upon you. Your limbs, your eyes, your mouth, your tongue, your ears, they have rights upon you. And then after that, he goes to your father. Your father has a right upon you. We have to read these rights. Your mother has a right, your educator, your neighbor, even your chasm, your enemy has a right upon you. Your enemy has a right upon And also he advised the Sultan, the Sultan, by saying that you have, people have right upon you. Oh, the commander, the leader, the president, the king, the prime minister, your subjects, they have right upon you. They became your subject because either by elections, you won the elections, which is not the case in many, in many Islamic countries nowadays. And they are your subjects. You must incorporate and exercise justice among them. Imam Zain al-Abidin says the leader is like a father. You're a spiritual father. Al-Walid al-Rahim, a compassionate father, a merciful father. This is how you must treat your subjects, your people. وَتَخْفِرْ لَهُمْ جَهْلَهُمْ If they are ignorant, don't punish them. Try to forgive them. وَلَا تُعَاجِلْهُمْ بِالْعُقُوبَةِ If they do something wrong, do not immediately sentence them to harsh sentences wala tu'ajilhum bil uqubah wa tashkuru Allah azza wa jal ala ma ataka min al quwwati alayhim we are speaking about thanksgiving imam zain al-abidin says the sultan the leader the president has to give thanks to Allah that enabled him to rule over the people this is an amana this is an opportunity that Allah has provided him so he has to fear Allah when he rules over the people, he has to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mentioned last night, again, one of the best and most spiritual works of Imam Zainul al Abidin is the book of As Sahifatu As Sajjadiyya. As Sahifatu As Sajjadiyya has been described in Islam as being Zabur Ali Muhammad, the psalm. We have the psalm of David. But in Islam, we have the psalm of Imam Ali ibn al Hussein Zain al Abidin. For those of us who would like to know how to speak to Allah, what are the adab, the manners of approaching Allah? How do we ask Him? What do we say to Him? We have to follow this book, As Sahifatu As Sajjadiyya, Lil Imam Ali ibn al Hussein Zain al Abidin, alayhi salatu wa salam. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته وأحبته علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيد شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهم السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصيكم وأوصي نفسي بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره روي عن مولانا الإمام أبي جعفر الإمام جعفر بن محمد الصادق أبي عبد الله جعفر بن محمد الصادق عليه الصلاة والسلام أنه قال من خاف الله سبحانه وتعالى أخاف الله منه كل شيء ومن خاف الناس ومن خاف الناس أخافه الله تعالى من كل شيء. Our six Imam, the Imam al Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam says, He who fears Allah. He who fears Allah, he fears nothing in this universe but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will make everything in this universe fearing him. But the person who, who fears the people, he doesn't fear Allah. He fears the people. He fears that this one, if I say this, this one is going to be bad with me. This one is not going to talk to me. This one is not going to invite me. This one is not going to give me. This one is going to leave me. He doesn't fear Allah. But when it comes to his own personal interest, he fears the people. He fears the community. That person who he fears the people, Allah is going to make him fear everything in this universe. He's going to fear everything, everything around him. This is the deal. Allah says, if you fear me, you're going to be strong. I will make everything in this universe fearing you and respecting you and honoring you and revering you. But if you don't fear me, if you don't fear me, you're going to fear everything around you. A clear example of that are A'immatu Ahlil Bayt alayhim Abdul Salat was salam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his household, his family, who feared only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They saw Allah, Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salat was salam, said, I always see my Lord. Ma ra'aytu shay'an illa wa ra'aytu Allah qablahu wa ma'ahu wa ba'dah. Anything I see, any object I see, I see God before it, with it, and after it. And he means by seeing Allah, I fear him. I fear him, I revere him. He's in my heart. Allah is with me all the time. So when he sees Allah, he's going to fear him. And when he fears Allah, people are going to fear Ali ibn Abi Talib. The enemies, of course. أخاف الله تعالى منه كل شيء. أهل البيت were the best example in particular today because it's the day of Imam Zain al-Abidin, the 25th of Muharram. Listen to this story. 
Imam Zain al Abidin, he performed the Hajj more than 25 times. Most of them, almost every trip to Hajj, he was walking from Medina to Mecca. Although the rides were available, means of transportation were available for them. And this is the tradition of his father, Imam Hussein, and his uncle, Imam al Hassan. They used to perform the Hajj walking from, from Medina to Mecca. They refused to ride. They refused. So when he arrived in Mecca, before him was Al Walid ibn Abdul Malik, the son of the Abdul Malik ibn Marwan during the time of his father. At that time, Abdul Malik was the caliph, the Umayyad caliph. So his son, Al Walid, who succeeded his father later, who became the caliph himself, he was performing the Hajj. And he tried to reach the black stone, Al Walid, the son of the Caliph, with his bodyguards and entourage. And, and if you go to Hajj nowadays, you see the same thing. When a member of the royal family doing Hajj, you find 500 soldiers with their boots doing the tawaf, surrounding that person. Even if that person is a woman covered, she has to have this luxury of having 500 soldiers with her. So Bani Umayyah used to do the same thing. Al-Walid is there and he occupied the entire haram. But when he came to touch the Hajar al-Aswad, he could not. It was too crowded. So he was pushed back. He tried the first time, the second time, until he gave up. He said, okay, I don't want to touch the Hajar al-Aswad. They brought a seat for him. He sat there and he was watching Al-Hajar al-Aswad. While he was watching Al-Hajar al-Aswad, suddenly Imam Zain al-Abideen came to the tawaf by himself, only by himself. And he did finish the tawaf, he did the salat al-tawaf. Then once he came approaching al-Hajar al-Aswad, people realized that this is the grandson of the Prophet. So they opened the path for him. Imagine Hajar al-Aswad, no one would allow you to, to get close to it. People immediately, they opened the path with ease, very easily. Imam Zayl Abidin came and he touched the Hajar and the, he kissed the Hajar. A man was standing next to the, next to the Al Walid ibn Abdul Muttalib, uh, Abdul Malik, Al Walid ibn Abdul Malik. He said, Man hadha? He turned to, to Al Walid, asking him, Who's this? Who's this man? The, the, the son of the Caliph with all his entourage, he could not touch the Hajar. Who's this man who came by himself, an individual? And people respected him. Al-Walid said, I don't know him, although he knew him very well. So Al-Farazdaq, a poet, was standing there, and he started reciting this poetry. He said, if you don't know him, هَذَا الَّذِي تَعْرِفُ الْبَطْحَاءُ وَطَأَتَهُ وَالْبَيْتُ يَعْرِفُهُ وَالْحِلُّ وَالْحَرَمُ You say, I don't know him, but the land, this land knows him very well. The house, the Kaaba, knows him very well. The Haram of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that surrounds Mecca, the city of Mecca, knows him very well. هَذَا الَّذِي تَعْرِفُ الْبَطْحَاءُ وَطْأَتَهُ Batha is the name of the land of Mecca. وَالْبَيْتُ يَعْرِفُهُ وَالْحِلُّ وَالْحَرَمُ هَذَا بْنُ خَيْرِ عِبَادِ اللَّهِ كُلِّهُمُ This is the son. This is the son of the most righteous among the people of, on earth. هَذَا بْنُ خَيْرِ عِبَادِ اللَّهِ كُلِّهُمُ هذا التقي النقي الطاهر العلم إذا رأته قريش قال قائلها When Quraysh look at this man, they recognize him. قال قائلها إلى مكارم هذا ينتهي الكرم مشتقة من رسول الله نبعته You say, I don't know him, but this man, his roots, نبعته is from his grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mushtaqatun min Rasulullah nab'atuhu tabat anasiruhu wal khimu wa shiyamu hadha ibn Fatimatin in kunta jahilu. He's the grandson of Fatimatu al-Zahra alayhi as-salam. Bijaddihi anbiya Allah qad khutimu falaysa qawluka man hadha bidha'irihi Listen, when you say, I don't know him, I don't recognize him, you are not going to hurt him, you are going to hurt yourself. falaysa qawluka man hadha bidha'irihi 
Al-Urb ta'rifu man ankarta wal ajamu. All the Arabs and the non-Arabs, they recognize him and they know him. And then he says, Min ma'sharin. This man belongs to a family that their love is a religious duty. Min ma'sharin hubbuhum deenun wa bughduhumu. Their hate, their hate is infidelity, is kufr and shirk. If you hate this family. Min ma'sharin hubbuhum deenun wa bughduhumu kufrun wa qurbuhumu manjan wa mu'tasamu. If you get close to them, you're going to survive in the next life. وَقُرْبُهُمُ مَنْ جَنْ نَجَاتْ وَمُعْتَصَمُ And then after that, it's a long poetry. But the concluding, then he says, مَا قَالَ لَا قَطُّ إِلَّا فِي تَشَهُّدِهِ This man, Ali ibn al-Husayn, never ever in his life said no to anyone. When people come to him asking help, even if they belong to the enemy camp, it happened many times that enemy camp, they come to him asking for help. He would never say no. One day, one of his companions, he said, Yabna Rasulullah, you open your house for food and money and help. Some of those people don't deserve. Some of them they have, they don't deserve. Imam alayhi salam says, what if one of them deserves and we deny him? What will happen to us? Maybe many of them don't deserve. But if I shut my door, maybe one of them is a deserving person. How can I answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He never said no. Ma qala la qat. He never said no unless one time. Illa fi tashahudihi. Lawla tashahudu kanat la'uhu na'amu. Only in his tashahud when he said la ilaha illallah. When he said, La ilaha illallah, the only time Imam Zayn al-Abideen said no. Other than that, always he would say yes to help people and the needy. Salamullahi alayka ya ibn Rasulullah, ya Ali ibn al-Husayn, ya Zayn al-Abideen. Adhamallahu lakum al-ajr. Today is the martyrdom of Imam Ali ibn al-Husayn. And we have also an honorable guest among us. Sheikh Qasim bin Yusuf, he's going to give a speech, inshallah, on Saturday, uh, Saturday, December 7th at 5 p.m. And although he asked me not to say that, but he is also the Imam of King Fahd Mosque in Culver City. So I apologize for saying that, Sheikh Qasim. Forgive me. I cannot help it, you know. Yeah. May Allah bless him and bless all the mu'mineen. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل كلمة الإسلام هي العليا اللهم وحد كلمة المسلمين على الخير والبر والصلاح والتقوى يا أرحم الراحمين من على مرضانا بالشفاء والعافية وعجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والشهداء ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلوات